and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. It's been such a pretty day today. Of course, I had to be at work today, so I couldn't spend it outside. But if y'all got to spend it outside today in this beautiful weather, then I'm happy for you. I just got in from work. And this morning before I left out, I thought, what do I want for supper tonight? You know, we think about that all the time. What do we want for supper? Sometimes it's just, it just gets hard, don't it? Trying to think of something. Um, the first thing I've done this morning is I had some chicken breasts in the freezer and I took them out and put them in the refrigerator last night. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make some individual, I'm going to make me and Danny some little chicken pot pies some homemade ones and instead of just cooking enough chicken for the chicken pot pie I just went ahead and put in about four big chicken breasts in my slow cooker and let them cook all day about six hours so they were sitting on warm when I got home but uh, so I'll cool off the other chicken breast and I'll put them up for some kind of uh, different supper this week that we might want I might want to make some white chicken chili or uh, just a Mexican chicken casserole or something. Just never know. So when I'm cooking like that, I like to cook ahead. And cooking up a bunch of chicken breast or chicken thighs or whatever you choose to eat in the slow cooker all day. And then you've got quite a bit cooked up that you can put, bag it up and put in the freezer for another meal. But anyways, we're going to be making. We're cooking for two today. A lot of y'all love it when I come up with these recipes because it's either just the two of you or maybe just one of you, but um, you can break it down to one very easy or you can make it uh, for two and then freeze the other or just or eat it the next day. But you're like me, you don't want to constantly cook a, a big old something every night when it's just the two of you and you feel like you're going to be wasting it um, or constantly putting it in the freezer. But anyways, we're going to be making chicken pot pie for two. And I'm going to be using these little bowls like this. These are oven safe bowls and they're probably about uh, six, uh, Maybe a five, a five by two or something like that is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using two of these. But I got my pie crust already done. You can use a homemade pie crust or store-bought, whichever you choose to do. Y'all have heard me say in the past, especially when it gets around this time of year and the holidays, that I do put store-bought crust in my freezer <laughs> because I'm constantly making so many pies when it starts getting about November and December so there's no shame in using store-bought pie crust that's for sure especially when you're a very busy person but uh, you can even use puff pastry if you want to and that's really good but we like just the plain old uh, homemade pie crust so what I've done is I use two cups of all-purpose flour a teaspoon of salt and uh, a stick of butter. I'm going to make a butter crust for this. I know a stick sounds like a lot, but the way I make my crust, if there's uh, two cups of flour, I always use at least half of that. Uh, well, it would be, say you're using one cup of flour, I would probably use 
I don't know. It's hard for me because I do it by touch and by feel. But using butter, I use just a little bit more than I would maybe lard. So two cups of all-purpose flour is going to make enough crust for these little ramekins and one stick of butter. So I'm going to bring y'all down here and I'm going to show you how I'm going to get my crust cut out. And then we'll be pre-baking the bottom crust. And while that's uh, baking, or probably what I'll do is, yeah, while, while the bottom crust is baking, we'll go ahead and make our filling. So uh, that's usually why I do it. And uh, it always turns out so good. Some people put bottom crust, some people just put top crust. Now, if I'm making a big chicken pot pie, a lot of times I'll just put top crust. Sometimes I'll put about it just whatever you feel like what you got time for. It don't matter. It's going to turn out wonderful either way. So let's get to cutting out our pie crust. Now I've just took my bowls and I'm just going to cut around them like this. Don't have to be perfect. You just want them to, to fit pretty good. To fit down in there. So that's one of them. I'm going to come over here and cut another one. And this is the same thing I do if I'm going to make little individual uh, cobblers like apple cobbler or apple pie or berry cobbler something like that that I'm making pie crust for and just making individual ones this is the way I do it and you can do this and you can freeze these you can put them instead of a bowl like this you can put them in a something that you can freeze in Sometimes I'll use uh, those foil throwaway bread loaf pans and little bitty ones. And I'll make cobblers and stuff in them and put them in the freezer. Wrap them up and put them in the freezer. So that's our bottom and our tops. Sometimes when I'm making chicken pot pie, y'all see me in the past make cobbler, and I'll make a, a, a lattice top. I'll cut, I'll cut out strips to put on top. And there is enough left that I could make a little cobbler. And we may do that. That may be our dessert. Okay. So I'm going to get my spray. And I'm going to spray the inside of my little bowls. Now you don't have to make chicken. You could do this with uh, turkey or beef. Or you could even do this. Uh, vegetarian and use a uh, vegetable broth and just use your your vegetables and what you're going to do is just stick one of them down the bottom just like that fits perfect I'm going to put just enough little piles in there just keep them from puffing up but I'm also going to pre-bake the bottom so what I'm going to do is put me just a little bit of parchment paper right here. And I've got some, uh, some little stones that I use to pre-bake my, my crust with. I'm getting tongue-tied here. I think I've had a hard day. What do y'all think? <laughs> so what I've done is I'm just taking my parchment paper... I've just scrunched it up real good and I'm just going to push it down in there on top of that crust. And 
I'm gonna get my baking stones. So I'm just gonna pre-bake these for just a couple minutes. I don't want them cooked all the way through, just enough to kind of to get them to where uh, they're not gonna be uh, doughy when you get it out. You're gonna have a nice crisp crust. So my oven's already preheated, 375. Don't put your uh, I'm going to put mine on the sheet pan, but make sure your sheet pan, don't put your sheet pan in the oven and get it hot and then put your cold dish on there. That could bust your dish. Now we're going to make our filling. I've got two tablespoons of butter. Over here, uh, my two little crusts, I pre-baked them. So they're out of the oven, sitting here, waiting for the filling. I put the top crust, you know, I rolled it out on a piece of foil. I do that sometimes because it's just easy cleanup. Once I get my crust done, I can just wad it up and throw it in the trash. But anyways, my top two crust, I kind of fold it up in that foil and put it in the refrigerator until I get ready for it. That just makes for a, a flakier crust. So these are waiting for my filling. I got two tablespoons of butter melting. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. Um, this is a 16 ounce package of mixed vegetables. This has got peas and corn and carrots in it. Um, I don't have to have potatoes in this one tonight. If I was making a regular size big chicken pot pie I would boil some potatoes and put them in here but me and Mr. Brown we're good we don't need that extra starch anyways so we're just gonna be using these vegetables with the chicken um, since it's got carrots in it I won't be having to cut up a carrot and so if you don't have the mixed vegetables just take one russet potato and cut it up cube it up take one carrot and cut it up small pieces and once you get your uh, your broth and stuff done you'll put it you'll put your potato and carrots in that and you'll let it cook a while till your potatoes get good and tender but I'm not going to be using either one I'm just going to be using I'm going to make it really quick and make it easy on me by just using some of these mixed vegetables I'm not going to be using a whole pound of them but when I get done, I'll see how many that I'll use because I'll be putting quite a bit of chicken, a whole chicken breast in this too. I'm going to take my onion and go ahead and saute it for just a couple of minutes. That's just about a fourth of a cup of chopped onions. If you don't like chopped onions in your chicken pot pie, you don't have to put them in there. You could also saute up some celery. You can pretty much put any kind of vegetable, anything in it that you want. I'm just using what I've got because I cook out of my pantry and my freezers. That's why y'all don't see me do grocery hauls because we live out of our pantry and freezer. That's just that's just what we do and how we grew up. You know, a lot of people do these uh, a year without the grocery store or doing a month without the grocery store. That's that's just something that we've always done. And it took years. It takes years to get your pantry and everything to where you're able to really do that. It's not something you just jump into. Cook. Onions have cooked a couple of minutes. So now I'm going to put a whole clove of minced garlic.
And I'm only going to let this saute for just a minute, not very long. Now I've got two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Garlic smells good. So I'm going to let this cook for just a couple minutes. You want to, to kind of cook your flour a little bit. Just like if you was making a, a sauce or a gravy. Now like I was saying, you don't have to use chicken. You can use uh, beef you could use a, a chuck roast that you've cut up into cubes and browned and cooked maybe in the slow cooker all day you can uh, even use pork just cube them up and, and cook them and turkey I've got two cups of chicken stock now, if you was doing this uh, vegetarian, you would use a vegetable stock. I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit. I had it on low. Now you can see how much uh, of the filling uh, gravy or sauce or whatever you want to call it. Usually if I was making a, a big chicken pot pie, you know, this thing would be full. But this is just for two people. So I'm going to put in As much as I love my vegetables, <laughs> we're going to call that about a cup and a half. I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken breast in that I just kind of cut up. This is going to cook and it's going to thicken up. Now I want to taste it here in a minute for salt. I don't want to salt it right now until I taste it. But this would be the point that you would put your, your cut up, cubed up potato and carrot. And then you would cook it until everything got tender. And then you would add your peas and whatever else you wanted to add to it. looking really good. I could even add more chicken to this. Got a taste of this and it does need salt. So you need to put about a half a teaspoon or however much salt you like. I'm also going to put some black pepper. I'm so glad I didn't open the wrong side of my salt shaker like I done on the last video. But all was good. Let's see. You can add you a little bit of thyme. I've got some fresh thyme around here. Just however you want to season it up. A little bit of thyme. You take your little bit of parsley. Some fresh parsley. And I'm just going to continue to let this cook on low, let it kind of thicken up a little bit. 
before I put it in my crust. I am going to taste this though. A little bit more salt. And pepper. Just make sure you taste it and season it good. Okay, our filling has thickened up. And I went and got me just a little bit of fresh parsley and put in there. So as far as seasonings, as, time, as far as the thyme and salt and pepper, I want y'all to put it in there. I want you to taste it as you go. I'll put the recipe down, of course, in the description box, and I'll also have it on my website. Uh, but even at that, I still like for people to, to taste everything. Because everybody's different. And we're going to start putting our filling in our in our bowls. This even this much makes quite a bit of filling. I tell you how we used to eat it. We, you make the chicken pot pie filling, and then we'd make biscuits, and we would eat the chicken pot pie over the biscuits instead of making crust. And it's it's just about as good, y'all. So I pretty much have got these full. a lot of filling. Now you can see my pie crust has <laughs> been in the refrigerator so I'm just going to kind of tuck some of the edges in or not. Just leave it. Now I'm going to poke crisscross right here in the middle to let some of the steam out. And I'm going to keep it on my cookie sheet here and I'm going to put it in the oven. 400 degree oven. And we'll see how long it takes to get them cooked. Since we had quite a bit of dough left, I've got enough dough right here, enough crust, that I can make me and Mr. Brown some individual little cobblers. And I'm going to use my apple pie filling that I canned, oh, a couple weeks ago. We were given a bunch of really good, beautiful apples. And I'm going to use this. So all I'm going to do is I sprayed my little individual pans. And I've got enough crust that I can cover the top of each one of these. So I'm going to take a little pie pan. I think I can pretty much just cut this in half. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to work. And I'm just going to put some of my apple pie filling. I, I sprayed them so it shouldn't stick and I'm not going to put a bottom crust just a top crust these apples were so good we were gifted apples and pears muscadines the really good people in our area we like to share and help people and help people put things up in their pantry if we you know have an abundance of fruit 
or vegetables out of the garden. We like to give them to people. So that was a whole pint of my apple pie filling. It's already got cinnamon and all that in it. I'm going to take some dabs of butter here. My butter was a little frozen. And you can freeze these. Whoops, too thick. You can freeze these. They should stay for in the freezer for good at least a month. Wrapped up good. And I'm just going to take one crust and I'm just going to shove it down in there. And I got a little bit left right here on the edge, but I ain't about to not use it. I'm just going to put it right here and make it fit. Do the other one that way. And these will be really good when me and Mr. Brown go camping. Stuff like that be really good. I'm just going to, just like that, put a little slit in there. And then we'll put these in the oven too. Or at this point, you can flash freeze them, then wrap them up good and freeze them without cooking them. And then uh, you can thaw them out in your refrigerator or stick them in your oven frozen and cook them. 20 minutes in my oven on 400 degrees. And it is good and done and brown and bubbly. And it's going to be delicious. Chicken pot pie for two. Well, I hope y'all like those recipes. Cooking for two. Chicken pot pie and apple cobbler. It's delicious. I know a lot of y'all like those cooking for two recipes, and I'll be bringing more to you, that's for sure, because I got several. I know just the two of us anymore, it really comes in handy not to have all the leftovers and just cook it enough for two because it saves money too and no waste. So, if you like this recipe, Give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And y'all come back and see us because we're always doing something. God bless everybody. We love you.